I'm Fiona. And, and welcome, welcome to the transcript. transcript. This week, Jamie and John give us some highlights from Sunday's game. Smarts and Crafts makes tie-dye t-shirts with Mr. Brester. In other news, looks into our school's current principal search. Cheap Thrills determines the best coffee shop in the area. And we get a better look inside the theater production of Romeo and Juliet. On Tuesday, a record-breaking cold snap hit the Great Plains and East Coast with severe winter conditions. As of Wednesday, 30% of the continental United States is experiencing snowfall, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. By the end of the week, temperatures in an estimated 300 locations are expected to tie or break national cold weather temperature records. At 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, the House of Representatives gaveled in for the first session of public hearings in the impeachment inquiry for President Donald J. Trump. Wednesday's witnesses are William Taylor, the U.S. Charge to Affairs in Ukraine, and Deputy Assistant Secretary of State George Kent. The hearings began with 90 minutes of questioning by House Intelligence Committee Chair Adam Schiff and the panel's top Republican, Representative Devin Nunes. Much of the low-lying areas of Venice, Italy, were partially submerged Wednesday after being hit by the highest tidewaters in more than 50 years. The waters flooded 85% of the city, according to City Hall, and authorities said that the water levels peaked at 1.87 meters, or approximately 6 feet, the second highest watermark in Venice's 1.6,000 year history. This week for the New England Patriots had a bye week, but as for the other teams in the AFC East, it was different. The Bills played the Cleveland Browns and lost 16-19. The Dolphins played the Indianapolis Colts and won 16-12, giving the Dolphins a two-game win streak. Hi, I'm Maggie. And I'm Brooke. And welcome to In Other News. Last week in Northampton, a man drove an SUV into a parked trailer after his windows fogged up. In Other News... Last summer, NHS's principal for over a decade, Brian Lombardi, resigned from his position, and with his departure came the search for his replacement. The candidates have been narrowed down to two finalists, Ted McCarthy and Lori Valancourt, who toured the school and met with community stakeholders at meetings this past Wednesday. We sat down with both candidates about this process to ask them about their new potential positions. After this rigorous process, our new principal will start July 1, 2020. I really think that I have come to know Northampton High School over the last four years, both in my role as an associate principal of curriculum and academics and most recently in my role as an interim principal. I think having a sense of who our students are and who the teachers are here offers a um, offers me a nice opportunity in, in how to help move our student and all of the players here forward in the work that we have done. I, I recognize that we have some pretty unique staff here who have a lot of creative ideas and who have some very interesting stories and the same holds true for our students. So already having the relationship with these folks, I think offers um, already some trust and it makes it easier for us to grow together. I think the way that I could support the Northampton community um, is, you know, my job as a principal is to listen to students and listen to teachers. And students and teachers often have really good ideas about what's going to make their school an even better place to come in to work and to learn. And so my job as a principal is to help them take those great ideas and put them into action. Some of the best things that we've done at Sutton High School, my job where I am now, is when we've had a student or a teacher who's had a really, really good idea and then we found a way to make it actionable. So I think the, way, the number one way that I'd be able to benefit the community here at Northampton High is listen to the ideas of the people who are here and have been, been here for a long time and probably have a lot of good thinking about what can make it an even better place to come to work and go to school every day. I think I'd be a good fit because in my 24 years, or something like that, <laughs> it's been a long time, um, in, in my many years of experience in schools, I think I've um, worked really hard to listen to kids and listen to teachers and help each of the schools that I've been lucky enough to be a part of be, become a better version of themselves. You know, my job is to work for the students and the teachers, um, and I think that if I were to get the job at Northampton High School, that would be what I would continue to do. I think that uh, my job as principal is not to be um, just, there's, there's an old saying that my dad would say, um, did you get the job to be something or to do something? Um, and I, got, I definitely got into this line of work to do something. So I, I feel like if I got here, my job and the thing that I would do um, is help kids and teachers feel like um, they can have a real big say in what happens at Northampton High School.
Hi, welcome, welcome to, to Smarts and Crafts. Crafts. This week, we're sitting down with Clayton Brester. And today, we're going to be tie-dyeing t-shirts. What do you do here at NHS? Well, I'm a first year teacher here, and I'm teaching chemistry and honors chem. Do you have any pet peeves? I think like a lot of negativity, like self-negativity or self-doubt. Like I had students last year that would come to me and they'd be like, oh, Mr. Brister, like this test was so hard or like I'm so dumb. And like you don't need to put that on yourself. Like the world will tell you that you fail enough already. Like just believe in yourself, go out there and get it. I don't know, I got apparently like Wacky personality, a weird hairstyle. I have a couple friends what? in your class and they love how you call oh. them mean girls. So I was wearing pink, it was October 3rd. I said some quote and then they asked me to like take a quick video on like their TikTok or something <laughs> about me like turning and being like on Pink We Wear Wednesdays. And I did it and that's the story <laughs> I guess. Wednesdays? I, I think. I don't know. <laughs> you mean on Wednesdays we wear pink? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. It went right over my head. I got a lot of green on this side there. I guess I should just walk backwards from now on. <laughs> just wear the shirt backwards. <laughs> or inside out. No one will know. On, on pink, pink we, we wear, wear Wednesdays. Wednesdays. First year at NHS, looking for your group? Here, look. This is going to be your guide for Northampton High, because where you sit at the cafeteria is crucial. You got everyone there. I can see you in any of these groups. Pink on Wednesdays. On October 31st, the House of Representatives voted to pass a bill outlining possible next steps in the impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump. Now that the impeachment inquiry is official, testimonies of key figures and Trump administration officials will now be able to be held publicly and broadcast on television, instead of being held behind closed doors with relevant House committees. This is a significant step in the inquiry because it means that the American public will be able to see firsthand testimony that could be potentially harmful to the president. Our main story, however, is the political process of impeachment and what would actually have to happen in the legislative branch for President Trump to be impeached. Impeachment is a political process outlined in the Constitution which allows Congress to reprimand a president and potentially remove them from office. A president is impeached if a simple majority or over half of the House of Representatives votes to impeach them. If impeachment passes the House, it moves to the Senate. The Senate process essentially functions like a courtroom trial. Lawyers and senators make their case as to why or why not the president should be indicted. If a supermajority, or two-thirds of the Senate, votes for removal, the president is indicted and removed from office. If not, the president remains in office and does not face criminal charges. Currently, Democrats are the ones pushing for the impeachment of President Trump, and they have the majority in the House. Chances are that President Trump will be impeached. However, Republicans have a 53 to 47 majority in the Senate, so in order for the president to be indicted and removed, all of the Democrats, plus 20 Republicans, would have to vote in favor. This is unlikely to happen because Senate Republicans have stayed largely against impeachment, and it would be surprising if that changed by the time the impeachment process reaches the Senate floor. The most likely scenario is that President Trump will be impeached by the House and then be acquitted by the Senate and remain in office, but a lot could change between now and the impeachment vote. I'm Elijah Bacall, reporting for the transcript. Hi, I'm Alexa, and welcome to a special look into Northampton High School's theater production of Romeo and Juliet. Cast and crew have been working very hard for the past few months creating a unique interpretation of a Shakespeare classic. 
We talked with director Stephen Aldridge and several members of the team to gain insight on the process of developing a theater production. So among my favorite things about working on this show is working with the actors on the gender identity and gender preferences of the characters. Uh, we've had such a long discussion about this. We've been talking about it for a couple of years in terms of this play and we finally decided to do the play this year. The great thing for me was to understand right when we began auditioning that it, was, it should not be up to me that the choice should not be mine, that, that it should be up to the actors, and that I should just find who read well together, who related well together, and be blind to that, and then let the actors make their own choices. The rehearsal schedule for this show has been pretty intense because we are doing Romeo and Juliet, which is a Shakespeare play, and Shakespeare's really intense, and we only had, like, probably maybe less than two months to work on it, which is not ideal for like a high school Shakespeare production. It's really hard to do a play with 22 actors. Um, th th their schedules are so, so crazy. So trying to get the right actors together to do the right scenes has just been, just been madness. And, uh, and this play is very complicated, very complex between small scale, intimate scenes and very large scale scenes with big fights in them and things. So this is a huge challenge. I think if I was gonna do a tip for someone looking to be a part of theater, it would be that the theater community always like loves welcoming new people. It's not like a click or something you have to like worm your way into. You can really just like show up, audition. You don't need to have experience. If you're not comfortable being on stage, the tech department is really fun. I haven't. I honestly wish I was more inv involved in tech because it seems really fun. So yeah. If you want to be part of theater tech, come to tech meetings on Thursdays. Um, we always need more people. Just, you know, for lighting, for sound, for costuming and design. If you want to do makeup for shows, that's a thing that you can do, hair. Um, and then if you want to act, then just audition. Come support your fellow classmates by getting tickets to the upcoming shows tonight at 7 p.m., tomorrow at 2 p.m., and tomorrow at 7 p.m. Tickets are available on romeonhs.brownpapertickets.com. Thank you for watching. On this Monday holiday, we're kind of all a little bit tired, and the best way to clear that fog is a good old cup of coffee. Northampton is known for its many, many coffee shops, so we're just trying to make the choice a little bit easier, and we're going to find the best one today. So let's go sip some uh, coffee and get caffeinated, my friends. <laughs> that was all for this week's episode. Heartstrings Magazine is taking submissions for their next issue. Check out their Instagram or email heartstringsmagazine at gmail.com for more details.